Hans Heysen, son of a German produce merchant, came to Australia in 1883. He grew to be an artist, a naturally gifted painter of natural scenes. He gloried in the South Australian countryside. He walked wherever he could, discovering new colours, new light. Australian colours and Australian light, the bush in all its variety. So when the South Australian Department of Recreation and Sport created a major walking trail, it was natural to call it the Heysen Trail. It's one of the world's classic walking trails, and to stroll one kilometre or to trek its entire length is an unforgettable experience. The trail starts on the southern coast and moves inland. Beside this windswept coast, the Heysen Trail is ideal for two or three day walks and ideal for schools to introduce city children to the great outdoors. Hi girls. Hi. How'd you sleep? Bit rough. Did you get wet at all? No. Did you guys go last night? Awful! Awful? Yeah! Your tent fell down. Yeah! At first, most city kids don't adapt very well. But in a little while, they start sensing the magic of the natural bushland and start enjoying themselves. You see that island over there? Do you know what that is? Kangaroo Island. Island. Do you pick out any of the lighthouses? They start becoming more aware of nature seeing things that, a matter of hours before, would have passed by unnoticed. Mr. Larry, look what I found. Real nasty little animal. Yeah. Real bitey. He's a predator. Counted the legs. About 40. Yeah, something like that. Two for each They start coming to terms with a more elemental part of themselves. A time like this, at their age, may well leave an impression to last a lifetime. The Heysen Trail goes north, not far from the city of Adelaide, so this part of the trail is perfect for day and half day walks. These simple red triangles and special Heysen Trail maps will guide your walks along the trail. Near Ichunga, you'll pass the Jupiter Creek gold fields. Miners took 13 tonnes of gold from here and they left for the more adventurous and exciting underground walk through an old mine shaft. Bridgewater and the old water mill, once turned slowly by the sparkling waters of Cox's Creek. Natural bridges like this fallen tree are an adventure for all ages. Last century, bush rangers waylaid travellers on the nearby roads and then hid out here, in these high tiers of rocks. So they were known as wild Irish tearsmen. Today, though, the area is known as Arbury Park, now almost in the Adelaide outer suburbs. And instead of bush rangers, 
you'll find social clubs and special interest groups like the Field Naturalist Society. Australia has more than half of all the world's species of birds and many of them can be found by the trail. Further north, the trail passes through the Cleland Conservation Park, where you can see our native animals at really close range. Further along, though still in the Adelaide Hills, the trail winds through Morialta and Montacute National Parks and then into the Mount Crawford State Forest. This part of the trail is perfect for longer distance bushwalking. These university students are on a three-day hike, walking through still dark pine forests. High on rocky hilltops through native bushland, building up a healthy appetite, good food and good company. <laughs> but his other famous meal was was meant to be some kind of Italian meal. And he brought up all this vermicelli. Oh, the vermicelli! <laughs> he had so much. This area is more rugged, more challenging. Though every now and again there'll be idyllic farmland. At the end of the day, a youth hostel. One of many hostels handy to the Heisen Trail. Inexpensive and very welcome. After the Adelaide Hills, the Heisen Trail moves into the drier country at the lower end of the Flinders Ranges. The air is clearer here, the colours brighter. One reason why Hans Heysen spent so much time here, and the same reason why other naturalists, photographers and painters come to walk on this part of the Heysen Trail. This group joins together to share accommodation, transport and fellowship. The signs to the Heysen Trail are clear and sturdy vehicles can travel quite near to the walking trails. In this case, into the Mount Remarkable National Park. Each day, two people ferry the cars to where the hikers will find their day's end. Beauty, I've got a short straw. Heather, we're going right away. Okay, this way. This country is wild, primitive, and full of surprises. Hey, look down here. What have you got? The wallaby hole. Where? Right. Yeah? Yeah, it's the uh, yellow footed rock wallabies. <coughs> Come and have a look. Certainly looks like it. Ah, watch out up there. There's a mud wasp nest. Yeah. This unique wilderness of the Mount Remarkable National Park has never been cleared. It's still virgin bushland. So now, as a national park, it will retain its natural beauty. 
hopefully forever. The most northern section of the Hyson Trail begins at Hawker, passes into the amazing Wilpena Pound and north through Parachilna Gorge. It was Hans Heysen who first brought the colours and the timelessness of these ranges to the world. With his vision, he was moved to write, The barren hillsides, incised and torn by nature's forces, hold a peculiar fascination. Great masses of stone are piled layer upon layer, as if built up by some very ancient people. To walk in the Flinders Ranges, you must first plan with care. Few people live here, water is scarce, and you must be prepared for your hike to take several days. Your hike leader will need to have walked this part of the Heysen Trail before to know what is in store. And what is in store is magnificent, awe-inspiring, but sometimes hard, hard work. The Heysen Trail a pathway spanning more than 1,500 kilometres of natural beauty and the natural wonders of South Australia. As Sir Hans Heysen put it, the extraordinary contrasts, the strength and delicacy of this land, stir the emotions and quicken the pulse with the beauty of it all. Its vastness and silence penetrates. It makes a call, a call very difficult to resist. <laughs> 